morning. Mm, greeting and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us with today's webinar. My name is Zhengang Luo, the special assistant of uh, AIT Belt and Road Research Center, and I'm the moderator of today's webinar. The AIT Belt and Road Research Center was established in 2019 with a vision to serve as an international hub for collaborative and innovative research for robust economic growth and sustainable development in the Belt and Road region. Since its establishment, we have been participating and collaborating in Belt and Road regions, promoting collaboration with China's and other Belt and Road countries, universities, and organizations, and supporting young scholars, research and study in the Belt and Road region. Today, we are very happy to have jointly delivered today's webinar on Thailand, China's collaboration on sustainable watershed development in the context of a Future Earth program and the future opportunities with our colleagues from National Research Council of Thailand. This webinar is meanwhile the second event of the strengthening collaboration network between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development series. Just for a little housekeeping before we get started, if you have any questions during this presentation, please type them into the chat box. Thank you. And firstly, I would like to invite uh, Professor Schbacher Dachau to the Vice President for Academic Affairs of uh, AIT to deliver his welcome remarks. In the past, he served as a Dean of the School of Environment, Resource and uh, Development of AIT, Executive Director of a Global Carbon Project in Japan, Research scholar of International Institute uh, for Applied Systems Analysis in Australia, and a senior policy researcher of uh, Institute for Global Environmental Strategy in Japan. So, Professor Schwacher, please. Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning from Thailand, very good morning from AIT. On, on behalf of AIT, I would like to warmly welcome you to our webinar series, which is aiming at strengthening the collaboration network between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development. Uh, as I know that this is the second event of the series, uh, which is co-organized by AIT's Belt and Road Research Center and National Research Council of Thailand. Uh, in our NRCT. Uh, the topic of today's webinar, uh, as, as you can see on the screen also in the background, is Thailand and China's collaboration on sustainable watershed development in the context of future earth program and future opportunities. As two very important developing countries in the Asia Pacific region, China and Thailand are both facing lots of different kind of environmental pressures and ecological risks due to rapid and continuous development of, and also the modernization of agriculture sector, industrialization and the urbanization. And these pressures are further exacerbated in the context of global climate change, which is adding us the further pressure. As a consequence, both countries, Thailand and China are threatened by various water resources risks, such as aquatic environment degradation and water resources shortages. As you know that the watershed is a very, very important uh, concept, which not only regulates a hydrological system, but also formulates a socioeconomic and political unit to properly manage the available natural resources. That's why the sustainable management of watershed is of the great essential in improving the service of the ecosystem delivery, quality of life of the people, 
and bring potential economic benefits. So this webinar aims to summarize and report the core research achievements of the Future Earth Program, which was jointly, jointly funded by National Research Council of Thailand, NRCT, and the National Natural Science Foundation of China, and to discuss the future collaboration opportunities in the field of sustainable water and water resource management between these institutions. So today, we are very much delighted to have experts who are deeply engaged in sustainable watershed development. Uh, during the course of next two hours webinar, they will share with us their knowledge, experience, and opinions aiming to discuss the future collaboration opportunities in the field of sustainable water and watershed management. I believe their presentations will help the audience obtain comprehensive and a very detailed information and knowledge from various professional viewpoints uh, regarding the, the topic. Uh, as a unique regional multicultural institution of higher learning, uh, offering the state of art education, research, and training in technology management and social development, uh, AIT is well positioned to play a leading role in sustainable development in this region and its integration into the global uh, e economy. I'm very much confident that AIT's partnership with BRI would be mutually beneficial in the pursuit of sustainable development in the region. And also the topic of today's webinar, as you all would agree, is very much uh, at the heart of the ongoing sustainable development goals, SDG context. And also this topic fits very well into the center of actually AIT's uh, thematic focus uh, where AIT want to excel itself and where the AIT has well-designated team. Water and sustainable development is at the heart of AIT's uh, future research agenda and, and the ongoing activity. Uh, finally, I especially acknowledge our joint organizer, National Research Council of Thailand. Uh, I can see uh, Dr. Montip there also. Uh, very nice to have this co collaborative uh, you know, atmosphere with NRTC and, and, and AIT and the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation. I also appreciate uh, our really partners and speakers from National Natural Science Foundation of China, Tsinghua University, Jiamen University, Ram Khamen University, Institute of Urban Environment, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences for their great uh, support of today's uh, webinar. Uh, I wish you all a very successful webinar and uh, I, I hope this will help us to gain lots of important insights and learning. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Professor Dakao. Uh, now we're honored to have our first opening speaker, Dr. Weprat Dion, to deliver her opening remarks. Dr. Dion is the Executive Director of the National Research Council of Thailand. Now, please, please, Dr. Dion. Distinguished speakers and buddy, greeting to all. It gives me great pleasure to deliver opening remarks for the webinar series on strengthening collaboration network between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development. This time on the topic of sustainable watershed development in the context of the Future Earth Program and Future Opportunity with its aim at strengthening collaboration between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development. The National Research Council of Thailand in honor and powerfully grateful to be a part of the partnership in organizing this webinar together with the AIT Braille and Road Research Center of the ASEAN Institute of Technology. I would also convey my appreciation to our collaborative organizations and institutes, including the National Natural Science Foundation of China, Tsinghua University, Institute of Urban Environment, Chinese Academy of Science, 
รามคำแหง University and s e a m o n University I should mention that NRCT has run cooperation with the Bell and Road Initiative and in hosting the Digital Bell and Road International Center of Excellence known as DBA ICOE Bangkok in with AIT in collaborator to this platform I'm confident that the Thailand and China cooperation will get stronger in the many years ahead NRCT in the principal organization in Thailand which guide the development of the country and public policy by using research including the integration and the administration of national research budget leading up to the Congress utilization NRCT administers research work with professional standards by using moral principles to reach achievement NRCT employs this value and principle in its delivery of research and development program in alignment with the UN agenda 2030 and the sustainable development goals I'm confident that the outcome of this webinar addressing watershed development as well as in subsequent webinar on other important key sustainable development sector will be valuable in learning the status of SDG implementation in Thailand China and other countries in the region again I thank our partner organizations and stakeholders and I wish the webinar well Uh, thank you very much. Now we are honored to have our next uh, opening speaker, Professor Yong Tao Zhang, who is the Deputy Director General of the Bureau of International Collaboration from National Nature Science Foundation of China. Now, Professor Zhang, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Dr. Wackard Dion, Executive Director, National Nature Science, National Research Council of Thailand. And dear Professor uh, Shobaka Daka, Vice President, uh, Asian Institute of Technology. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's my uh, pleasure to attend this uh, webinar on the China Thailand collaboration on sustainable what shared development in the context of the future program and future opportunities. On behalf of the National Nature Science Foundation of China, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to the successful opening of the meeting and warm welcome to all the participants. The enduring friendship between China and Thailand can be dated back centuries ago. A wide range and frequent bilateral cooperations in wide ranging areas have led to the abundant fruits. As one of the major science funding agencies in China, NSFC values highly the partnership with our talent counterparts in advancing the science and technology progress. As earlier as 1992, NSFC signed the MOU with uh, NRCT. So it's uh, already 30 years of long cooperation histories. Up to now, more than 50 joint research and exchanging projects and joint workshops have been supported under the Amber framework. So I still remember the good memory, uh, memories of the 20, uh, 2019 kickoff meeting on uh, what shared science and uh, sustainable management within the future Earth framework in Xiamen before the, the pandemic. Uh, uh, today, the, the, the uh, present here that Moses also participated in that meeting. Uh, I'm very glad that we can meet again, even virtually. Uh, what shares science and sustainable management and global climate change and 
anthropogenic uh, multi activities is a very important topic for both China and Thailand. Uh, since we are facing the dual tasks of economic development and regional sustainability at the world size scale and in the background of global change. In the year of 2016, NSFC and NRCT co founded uh, five projects which results have been uh, fruitful, both in science and in social economic benefits. I believe this uh, webinar will not only provide platform for Chinese and test researchers to discuss their research achievements and further strengthen the cooperation network among them, but also stimulate the interdisciplinary integration of natural science, social science, humanities, and engineering the relevant fields of both countries. Sustainable development is the common pursuit of the world. The goals and challenges listed in the SDGs are international in nature, requiring global thinking and international collective actions. And SFC is willing to uh, contribute to the realization of the UN SDGs in Thailand and China in collaboration with Thailand founding partners. And would like to take this opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to the scientific cooperation benefits our two countries. Uh, as you may know, and as I've seen launch the Sustainable Development International Cooperation Program, we call the STIC program, targeting at the SDGs set by United Nations and the major global changes as a platform to offer, uh, cooperate with global funder, funders and international organizations, which fit per, uh, perfectly with the common goal of NSFT and NRCT. We sincerely welcome NRCT and the researchers from both Thailand and China to join the STIC program, which will contribute to the realization of the UN SDGs in our two countries. Once again, I would like to thank all scientists and colleagues present here today. I will also express my gratitude to the Belt and Road Research Center, Asian Institute of Technology, for your thoughtful and warm arrangements for the great event. I wish the meeting a great success. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we are pleased to have Professor Darwin Young and Dr. Jerison Santisers. Sandy Sersong to deliver the project one, a comparative study on the change of uh, hydrological process and uh, fluxes in the Jolong and uh, Chaopaya river basins under changing climate. Professor Yang is from the Department of uh, Hydraulic Engineering of Tsinghua University. He has rewarded the Changjiang Scholar Program Chair Professor, and his research area is uh, hydrological modeling and uh, prediction, uh, eco -hydrolo hydrology and uh, land surface, atmosphere interaction, and uh, climate change impact. Dr. Santi Sersong is uh, from Rakhainhung University. He has devoted his interest in climate science for over 15 years, and he has been working on both statistical and dynamical downscaling of general circulation models and future climate change and extreme event projection projects. Now, please. Okay, thank you, Chairman, and good morning, everybody. Uh, can you hear me and see my screen? Yes, Professor. Okay, I will briefly uh, introduce our results from uh, from this uh, comparative study in the Jiulong and the Chaopaya River. Uh, my talk will focus on the hydraulic modeling and the prediction in the changing environment. Uh, 
uh, because I, I, I received this message in maybe a one week before. <clears throat> so I prepared this slides by myself. I also include our collaboration result between Tsinghua University and uh, Rongkang University. So Dr. Uh, Jalasang, uh, thank you very much for your, for your support. Uh, my personal work includes these five uh, the following parts. I will briefly talk about the, the, the background. You know, uh, due to the climate change and uh, also the human activity and the uh, catchment, uh, so we, we use, usually we assume the hydrology has a stationarity during our <coughs> planning and uh, for the construction of the, 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 the hydraulic engineering. But this theory basis of water resource management is strongly questioned because of the climate change. So the stationarity will be a lot valid in the future. This was discussed uh, uh, very common in the, the international community. community. Uh, so how can we uh, understand this change uh, in water resources and also the flood and salt uh, in the past? And also how can we predict the change in the future? So both the modeling in the future, the, the past and the prediction in the future is important for the water resource management. So we need to uh, do hydrological modeling and the prediction. We use a, a good model. So this is our uh, very brief background of our this, this, this research. And if we look at the, the past, we have a two kind of hydrological model, the conceptual model and the process-based model. So for the conceptual model, so we either use the empirical or uh, conceptual uh, characterizing of this catchment by simple equation, but we also can uh, cooperate with the, the, the very detailed information like uh, sunlight uh, measured uh, information on the precipitation and also land surface. We use uh, more certificated modeling processes. So we call the distributed hydrogen model. So it's a two kind of model. So let me talk about the very simple model. If we want to estimate the hydrologic response to climate change, so we, when we know the change in the precipitation delta P and the change of air temperature delta T, we want to how much change in the, in the runoff delta R. So the very simple model, we can, how to say, the, the, the get, get a linear equation to estimate the change of P and the change of the temperature uh, impact on the change of runoff, uh, but this is uh, not useful for a very complicated system because the, the, the watershed is complicated and also the hydraulic response is nonlinear. So we also uh, try to use a, a water energy balance model. This is a, a, this is a nonlinear, a more complicated, but uh, even then, this is also uh, not good enough. But uh, as, anyway, this we can estimate the change of uh, climate and also change in land use. Uh, both change impact on the runoff. Uh, by very simple uh, equation, we can estimate the runoff due to the climate change impact on the, the temperature and the precipitation. And also how we also maybe roughly estimate the landscape change on the, on the, in the watersheds. So these are two very simple equations. And at the same time, we also develop a process-based model. Uh, we call the geomorphological based hydrogen model in the watershed. We develop a very detailed, very complicated, the, the sophisticated scheme to uh, describe, dis discretize the basin into sub-basin, into grades and hill slope. And we try to uh, simulate the hydro hydrological response from hill slope to level network and to low the, 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 the the hydrologic change in, in the whole basin. So when we have this model, we can do some scenario analysis. So we can fix the land use next to the climate change to see how climate change impact on the, on the hydrology. As we can fix the climate and change the land use and the cover, we can see how much impact of the land use change on the hydrology and water resources. This is a very simple the, the scheme we can use. But the most important thing is the model could be good enough. So by testing this, we also, we also want to 
incorporate the vegetation in effects because the deforestation or afforestation, it was a very, very much uh, important in the past. As we know, Chafriya has deforestation. And in China, we have very much afforestation during the past 20 years. How much those change impact on the hydrology, we also want to uh, get a simulation by the model. So we develop a equal hydrogen model uh, for this sense. So by the very simple equation, so we try to incorporate the, 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 the vegetation coverage and uh, also the change of, and, and the vegetation type into the equation. This is a simple equation we was developed in the past. And uh, we also uh, developed a model to try to incorporate the water cycle energy and also the uh, CO2, emission, CO2 uh, emission and uh, also the, the, the photosynthesis. So we have the groundwater to the canopy and to the watershed to have a more comprehensive distributed the eco model and the watershed scale. This is the, the, the work we have done in the past four years. By this uh, development, we try to apply to our uh, pocket basin, one is the Chafriya River. So we do see in the past, uh, the Chafriya River basin have a, a very much increase of uh, total runoff, uh, especially after the 1994. Uh, so we look at the different uh, tributary, Ping, Wang, Yong, La, so, and also and, and the C2. Both uh, those gauges have a significant increase of total runoff. So we look at this change of the the, the, the runoff, how, what, what is the reason for this change? We look at the climate, especially the precipitation and also the land use, especially the, the forest cover. We do see the deforestation and the increase of uh, precipitation is dominate this change. So we quantify how much uh, impact from the, from the precipitation, how much impact from the air temperature, how much impact from the deforestation. So we estimated those uh, contributions from different change uh, on the, the total uh, runoff. So we can roughly see 1% of forest change. So we have deforestation by 1% could increase the annual runoff by 2% uh, uh, to 6%. So this is a very large increase of the, the, the runoff by deforestation. Of course, increase of the precipitation also increase the, 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 the total runoff. So this is what I've done. So the most important thing is that we want to know the future. So how can we predict the kind of the hydric response to changing environments uh, due to the climate change? So climate change may also rise temperature, change, temp change precipitation, and, and the future will also change the land use. And the land use change will affect on the vegetation type. So we try to include all the change from climate and land cover and the vegetation into the hydrogen modeling to predict the future uh, climatic change. So we uh, use the, the CMIP-6 uh, uh, data from the IPCC. We select the different uh, uh, RCP scenario and also the future social economic development scenario. So we, we, we call this SSP scenario, SSP plus RCP. So this is a, a, a typical uh, GCM we used for this, uh, for this uh, project. So let's look at the Jiulong River. So the future precipitation at air temperature uh, from the past, we, we evaluate we evaluate the past uh, simulation by the GCM. This have a good simulation, so we, we, we can see the the, the prediction, maybe the projection of the future is, uh, is uh, uh, how to say, is uh, trustable. We can see the rainfall and the temperature uh, increase in Jordan River uh, for the three scenario in the Jordan River. And by this one, we also estimate the land use and the vegetation change. So from the past to the future, we see the uh, the deforestation, farmland, and the urban area are changing due to different uh, uh, social e economical scenario. 
and also affected by the by the climate. So by this the land use change, we also simulate the vegetation change by a model by the uh, vegetation dynamic model. Uh, so when we have this uh, change of land use, vegetation, and the climate, we import our hydrologic model. We can predict the change of hydrology in the future. So under the future scenario of climate, climate and the land use change, the annual runoff, annual runoff in, is increasing in the Jordan River Basin. We can see uh, in the past uh, 1990, 2000, uh, 2010, so we have the, the different uh, uh, value for the, 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 the gauge point. By the simulation, we compare with the GCM output, we have a similar, similar results. So based on the historical simulation, we predict the future. So future change of the annual runoff can be get for the different uh, decades and under different uh, uh, the, the, the RCP scenario. So this way, we, we, results we can see. So we see the runoff increasing in Jordan River, but we look at the high flow, the high flow in Jordan River and the increase much, uh, even increased by uh, for, uh, 64 percent to 100 44 percent so much increase in high flow so this is the way you understand so if we look at the floods uh, in the future the frequency of floods become more become the flood become more frequent in the future and we can see the historic 100 year flood might occur as 30 or 50 years of the time period in the future so in the past 100 year floods may be more become more frequent in the future, become 30 years or 40 years like this. And if you look at the child free elderly person, the uh, similar uh, precipitation change and the temperature change in the, in, in, in the future. So we also see very much increase of our temperature and we also see the increase of our, the rainfall. But the rainfall is more concentrated in July, from July to September. So we can see the in Thailand, in Chafriya, we have a two precipitation, precipitation peak. One is, uh, is about May uh, to June. Another one is uh, July to September. But uh, from July to September, this the precipitation in this uh, this season could be increased much. And uh, also, we based on different uh, uh, social economic developments, we we see the land use change in Chafriya, and we do see in the SSP. Uh, the one twenty six. So we we still see the first the first station, but uh, in a high uh, development scenario with SSP uh, three seventy, the deferred station is going on uh, in the future. So we do see different uh, first deferred station or, or first station scenario in the future in Chafriya, especially in the upper part of Chafriya. So based on the, this one, we simulated the vegetation uh, change. So we simulated the past and validated by the, by the observation. So then we continue to simulate the, uh, to the future uh, to see how the change of the, 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 the forest and also an agriculture land and other, other vegetation type. We based on those change, we import our hydrogen model to see the water resources change in the future. So we do see in the Chafriya River, uh, the total water resources increase. Uh, but uh, we, if we take, account about, take into account of the, the population increase, the water resources per capita decreases, in, especially in 2030 to 2040. And we look at the floods in the future, the floods also become more frequent due to climate change. If we, if we look at the, this table, we can see the historical 30 years floods, 50 years floods, and 100 years floods in the future will be become more frequent. Uh, for example, the 100 years floods in the past will be become about 40 to 50 years floods. So that means it's more frequent in the future. And if we look at the special variability of floods, 
for the Chaprea Basin from mountain to the plain area, the future floods become more frequent in the downstream than in the upper stream. That means if we look at the Bangkok, Bangkok floods may be more frequent than Chiang Mai. So this is the, 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 the special variability of the floods. It's not, equal, not, not the same. It could be different, especially in the plain area, in the downstream of Chaprea, we have a more serious floods in the future. At the same time, we look at the drought become more frequent due to climate change. Similar, we look at the historical 30 years drought, 50 years drought, and 100 years drought, and in the future will be become more frequent. Like drought, the 100 years drought may be become 50 to 70 years, so it's become more frequent. It's similar than, than the floods. And if we look at the, the drought uh, special variability, uh, in, in the in the Chaffrey, yeah. but there's not much um, uh, special variability. That means the upper dream and downstream have almost the same, the same change uh, in the future of the result. So based on the, the previous understanding, we want to uh, suggest, give some suggestion to the police maker. The climate change would dominate the future hazardous change. Well, the impact of land use change could not be ignored. That means land use change is also important for the hydrology. hydrology. Like we, not, not like we should, uh, the deforestation will increase the flood. At the same time, we do see the large reservoir. We look at the Pumipon reservoir and the Srikhet reservoir. The large reservoirs can significantly reduce the damage of floods and uh, salt. Well, could be a major countermeasure for the uh, water disaster in the future. So we also suggest uh, adapt appropriate land use, land management to cope with the future change in water resources and disaster. Because the land use change also have an important or significant impact on the hydrology. And the most important thing is we, we, I, I think we, we suggest the more effective reduction of green gains emission is highly expected through the international cooperation because the land, the climate change dominates the future hydrologic change and also dominates the, the future flood and salt and makes the flood and salt more serious and could be uh, induce more damage, more larger damage in the future. So we really encourage the global climate the collaboration in the future for green gas emission control. And finally, I want to summarize by this figure. So how can we, uh, by this study, by our uh, data collection, the modeling and the understanding of the hydrology and the water resources, the flood and the salt in the past, and also the prediction in the future, we want to see. Based on this, we could, uh, gave a, a suggestion to the policy maker for mitigation and adaptation for the, uh, the future climate change. This is the kind of uh, the, the, the framework uh, we can uh, we, we, form, we form during this joint project. But uh, go to the next step. So how can we, uh, how to say, the, how can we pass our understanding and our suggestion to this policy maker so through our, uh, to the, the joint research team by China and Thailand. So I think this uh, could be one of the topics we can discuss in this uh, webinar. We, 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 how can we continue the future uh, collaboration and uh, contribute to our society and uh, make a more uh, concrete uh, suggestion to our uh, policy makers. <clears throat> So thank you, uh, Chairman. I will finish my talk. And uh, finally, I will thank the NSFC and the NRCT for supporting this joint research. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Jalasan, could you, could you please end your report, and your input? I will finish my, my, my share. Thank you, Professor. <clears throat> Uh, let me share my screen.
Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, thank you. Thank you, for Professor Yang, for your support, your great support to our project. Um, I think um, I give a brief idea about this. We have three objectives that Professor Yang already mentioned. And uh, <clears throat> our framework in, in our work, uh, we have um, uh, conduct uh, dynamical downscaling to uh, to downscale uh, the three GCM to be the climate forcing to to the water management uh, model. Uh, in our case, we use a weep model that uh, not not that detailed like uh, the model that Professor Yang uh, has already mentioned. Um, <clears throat> at first, we um, use the codex Southeast Asia domain and simulation to, to downscale as a framework to downscale over our uh, GCM. Um, <clears throat> in this case, we use uh, Lexium uh, original climate model uh, to downscale the GCM. The three GCM that we select, including uh, MPIS, MMI, Zero, and HAPGEM. <clears throat> we uh, downscale the GCM to 25 kilometers uh, First, uh, we need to um, uh, to test the performance of the GCM whether they can uh, uh, re-simulate the past climate world. So, in this case, we uh, divide our our uh, domain to uh, twenty subdomain, uh, cover the whole Southeast Asia region. <clears throat> um, when you take a look at uh, the performance of the model. Uh, to simulate uh, the precipitation seasonal cycle over the subdomain of, of our, our Southeast Asia. Uh, it seems that our, our uh, downscaling uh, output are pretty good to simulate the uh, seasonal cycle, um, but there are still some uh, bias, wet bias over uh, some area, especially in the model and uh, in, uh, the island, the ocean, but uh, our our uh, Thailand area cover uh, what we call the region 14, uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Uh, it seems that uh, the output from uh, our our simulation is quite good to reproduce uh, the visitation season seasonal cycle or this subdomain. And when we take a look at uh, the subdomain over the Thai area, uh, we uh, actually we have uh, five uh, five region, but because we need to um, cover both uh, the east and eastern coast and western coast over the south southern part of Thailand, so we divide our our subdomain to nine sub sub regions. So we will take a look at uh, the whole uh, country area. The downscaling um, output can reproduce the seasonal cycle of the station quite well, uh, as this uh, Taylor 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 plot too. We can we can take a look at this Taylor plot and. Uh, uh, the ASCA is quite quite high for our 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 uh, downscaling output. So when we take a look at each um, sub region, it seems that uh, our downscaling output can reproduce the precipitation, uh, precipitation seasonal cycle quite well too. <clears throat> and in case of uh, temperatures. Uh, when you take a look at the temperature seasonal cycle, all uh, GCM that we downscale to 25 kilometers can reproduce the temperature weld too. It's the same as in the case of um, the Thai subdomain. <clears throat> uh, when we take a look at uh, the performance of our downscaling output to reproduce the ex extreme precipitation in disease over uh, the area of Thailand when we compare with the observation uh, using the met meteorological station 
uh, data set. Uh, it seems that uh, our, our output, our simulation output can reproduce uh, the extreme station uh, over the area of Thailand is quite good too. Here is the projection of temperature normally uh, of pre uh, GCM members um, and one uh, ensemble. Um, you see, it seems that uh, under RCP 8.5, uh, we will face uh, four degrees Celsius at the end of the century. That's not good. Uh, as everyone know that uh, it's a kind of um, early possible uh, uh, damage to the ecosystem. So uh, when we take a look at uh, future projection of extreme precipitation disease, it seems that um, uh, under both um, RCP, we will have a flood, flash flood signal for the area of the country. And in the case of um, uh, the doubt signals, when we take a look at the frequencies of uh, presentation, heavy presentation days, uh, it seems that uh, we face a doubt signal under the future climate change under both uh, RCP, RCP 8.5 and RCP 4.5. <clears throat> For the annual contribution from wet day or presentation total, it seems that uh, the total visitation under both RCP or the area of the country seems to be decreased. So in the case, in this case, you face a drop signal too. <clears throat> and when you take a look at the consecutive dry, dry day, we face a drop signal. And uh, it's the same as uh, consecutive wet day you find the drought signal under the future climate change. So uh, when we narrow down our, our projection to cover only the wet season of the country or about uh, in, the, in the period of April to September for both uh, RCP, it seems that RCP 4.5 when we emphasis on uh, the Chao Priya River Basin and the uh, boundary uh, basin up north. It seems that under RCP at uh, 4.5, we will face um, uh, the, the drought uh, signal under climate change. But in opposite, uh, under uh, the RCP 8.5, it seems that we, we find we, we will face the wet signal under the climate change. So in the case of um, uh, the WEEP model that we applied to uh, as a tool to uh, fight the impacts of uh, the climate change on water management, we, we have uh, this catchment and uh, the total area, total uh, simulation areas cover 29 provinces. And uh, we have, um, um, majors, eight major rivers and uh, over 16,000 uh, small rivers and canals. And uh, when we applied uh, the weed model to, uh, to, the, to find out what will happen over under the climate change, uh, under the leveling scenario, it seems that um, we have uh, the unmet water demand uh, under both RCP. So in this case, uh, we applied uh, uh, three or four uh, future uh, water management scenario, including the precise farming and switch to um, lower uh, water demand crop as well as to increase the forest areas. Uh, it seems that uh, this, uh, scenario can um, uh, reduce the unmet water demand uh, of under the future climate change in both uh, RCP 8.5 and RCP 4.5. So I will come to our conclusion that uh, 
the three RCM that we have um, applied this study can have high performance to simulate the past climate change or the study area. And the future uh, presentation uh, projection over child play river basin uh, within the rainy seasons. Uh, under RCP 4.5, the presentation total tend to decrease. However, the RCP 8.5 tend to increase. And uh, for, for the future um, climate change adaptation, we found that the pre uh, precision farming as well as low water demand crops will be a good practice for climate change adaptation. And the accurate season, seasonal forecast and early warning system are highly important to cope with the climate change. I think that's all my uh, conclusion for today. Thank you. Thank you for NRCT and NFC to in supporting us and as well as Qinghua University, especially for Sir Yang uh, to support our, our work. Thank you. and uh, Professor Yang. Um, next, we are pleased to have uh, Professor Jin Liang Huang and uh, Professor Vilas Niti Vatananu to deliver the project too. Watershed-based uh, adaption to climate change, a uh, comparative study between Jolong River and uh, Chao Paya River. Professor Huang is from Xiamen University. His research area includes watershed process and watershed management, uh, consequences of environmental evolution in coastal areas, and uh, land use cover change. Professor Villas is a dean of a School of Environment Resources and the Development of AIT. His research area includes system approach and management for urban sustainability, urban competitiveness and resilience, uh, waste, recycling, waste recycling and uh, circular economic and so on. Now let's uh, welcome, let's invite uh, Professor, Professor Huang. Okay. Uh Okay, uh, good morning everyone. It's my pleasure, my pleasure to present the NSFC and the NRCT joint project. Uh, I'm Jin Liang Huang from Xiamen University. Uh, this project uh, focuses on the uh, risk assessment of hydrological hazards and uh, adaptive uh, strategy in the uh, Zhong River set and the Chapia River set. So to achieve the research arm, uh, we developed a uh, methodology. So um, first, uh, we perform the simulation analysis using the uh, climate model and the flood model, uh, hydraulic model, and also an use model. Um, the output of the model uh, will be used by the risk uh, assessment. And then finally, we put forward the uh, adaptive strategy. So here is the study area. Uh, in my presentation, I just focus on the Jurong River Water Say. And the Jurong River Water Say is the second largest water say in Fujian province. And uh, it serves as a drinking source for more than 8 million people, including salmon uh, downstream. So in recent 
two decades, uh, the population GDP uh, increased sharply, and uh, as well as with uh, the area of built up. So um, let's go to the, the second part of my presentation, research progress. So the first is about uh, the investigation of temporal and spatial policy hydraulic hazards. So uh, we connect the historic uh, flood humans uh, from the social media, including the Weibo, WeChat, and, uh, and then we, we use GIS to produce the high spot uh, of flood disaster in the June we want to say. So we can identify the hotspot of flood disaster. Mm -hmm. And then we use the extreme rainfall index uh, to describe the, the trend of rainfall extreme over June, we want to say, during 1960 to 2015. So we identify the seasonal cycle of rainfall extreme. And we also uh, is part the trend of rainfall in trip over during the world set during 1960 to 2015. And then we project the change of climate trim uh, by uh, analysis of written value. And also we use the regional climate model measuring for uh, to predict the, the change of climate trim. So let's reach out. And we find that uh, more as severe fresh flood may work and the frequency and magnitude of ruining flooding may increase and decrease in northwestern and uh, southern southern June rivers, Jurong River say respectively. And now we go to the second part of my research progress. It's about hydrodynamic uh, model development. It's an important part because uh, well, we need the output of the hydrodynamic model as an input for a risk, uh, flood risk assessment. Here we have three uh, model, the hand model, the rapid, uh, rapid uh, Flooding model, hand model for the entire uh, what I said, and also what I said, and the HEC, HMS, IS, and also MIC model for the uh, municipal area and community scale. So uh, the up for the, the model, including the inundation area and dips. So here is the, the rapid flooding model, hand model at a Watson scale. So after developing the model, we predict the flood in inundation areas, a different return period. And also we predict the flood in inundation dips, a different flood return periods. So we also verify the result based on the, the data we collect. At the subwater scale, we also develop the hand model and the HEC HMS. And we also verify the model and we also compare the model uh, by uh, and then also HEC plus. So at the municipal community scale, we also uh, use the MIC uh, model uh, to, to develop the dynamic model. So based on the, the, the hydrodynamic models output, and then we perform the flood risk assessment uh, at the policy scale. Uh, first, uh, we develop an index system-based uh, framework uh, to, to do the flood risk assessment. Uh, so in this framework, the flood risk is the function of hidden exposure sensitivity and the adaptive capacity. So uh, using GIS, uh, we produce the maps uh, with regard to hidden index, exposure index, sensitivity index, the 
adaptive capacity index. And finally, we produce the, the, the flood risk. So we can find the flood risk in the downstream is higher than that in the upstream. So, and then we, we analyze the, the contribution for uh, each uh, component, including the, the pattern, exposure, sensitivity, and the adaptive capacity. And we find that the pattern component, uh, component contribute the most to the flood risk can see the level figure. And uh, in the right figure, you will can find that uh, uh, the indicators which contribute rank top five. Uh, you can see the, the this figure. You can see the uh, for the four water say You can see the peak recharge, and also for the county or or, or district, the, the daily measurement rainfall and the peak flow had the largest contribution to the flood risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the water state scale, we also develop a simulation, simulation based framework to perform the flood risk assessment. And uh, we, we use the, the result, uh, the, the flooding inundation depth maps uh, derived from the hand model. And, uh, and we, we further, we Tablets that deep damage circle uh, the curve and uh, we and quantify the asset loss under different return periods. So that's uh, the result. And uh, we can find uh, the flood risk in the downstream is higher than the upstream, and that the industrial uh, state has the largest relative contribution to flood risk. Hence the right figure. And uh, we also find the overall inundation areas in the water set increase sharply when the rainfall extreme intensity is larger than the 30 year flood return periods. And then the total loss increase substantially when the exceedance probability is larger than 0.05. Uh, so at the sub water set scale, we also perform the floods. Sensitivity. Uh, we choose the, the hotspot identified before and uh, in the upstream or North River. Uh, so that's the astrology, uh, wave flow, and uh, actually that's the uh, hybrid approach in which HEC, uh, HMS, uh, HEC, IS, and HEN, and also machine learning method. Uh, well integrated. So we want to identify the, the importance of the, the, the flooding uh, uh, induced factors. Uh, at a municipal community scale, we use MIC uh, to do compound flood simulation and the impact assessment. So this is the, the framework. Uh, we want to emiscate the inundation characteristics and then the consequent direct economic loss in the center, center city of Longyan. So first is about the, the, the previous flood simulation and dam assessment and then that's uh, the fluvial uh, flood simulation and then assessment. So now it's, it's the combined you know, fluvial and the fluvial flood and then uh, assessment. And then we, we conclude that uh, considering only fluvial and uh, fluvial, we need to underestimate of flood risk damage. And then the compound effect of coal occurrence of two types of floods on inundation and damage is the result of the interactive and complicated hydraulic process. And the building structure and contents, especially residential building, were identified as the dominant part of 
direct economic losses. So the the, fun, the final part of the research project is about the straight adapt, adaptive strategy. Uh, here we, we we applying multiple scale and multi dimension approach. So we pull forward uh, eight structure and uh, eight non structure flight management structures measures and also formulate uh, uh, adaptive flood management measures uh, with, with regards to structural physical society and institutions. So, and uh, we also propose uh, the target and target and uh, adaptive measures for phase flood, phase flood, river flood, urban water law, and uh, storm search. So you can see this frequent flood, uh, different uh, part of it. Uh, worship and also different uh, and use cover, cover types. This is for structural measure and also non structural measure. And uh, we also perform the uh, cumulative cost benefit analysis. We prevent buffer uh, scenarios. Two scenarios first is for the uh, natural represent buffer scenario for the four what is it? Uh, we find it like this scenario is not practical because the investment is too large and the benefit has no significance. And uh, in terms of the, the second uh, scenario, green may bring balance scenarios. The balance of income and expenditure can be achieved when a green uh, green bail development locally uh, occurs in front events with rainfall intensity intensity beyond 100 return periods. So the, the, not the longer the time and the greater the, the next uh, marginal benefit on the green and the green belt. So the, the final part of my presentation is about the pay. Uh, I think we need more effort, uh, more uh, strong effort to conduct uh, in depth comparative study on uh, understanding mechanism of flood risk and the uh, mitigation and adaptive strategy in the changing environment between Jurong River watershed and the Chabia River watershed. So maybe in the later, uh, Professor Velas will show uh, more information about uh, the comparative study. But here in my presentation, I just focus on the, some results such findings in the general river set. And the second is about uh, uh, reducing the uncertainty of the prospective changes, future uh, hydrobiological extremes in the Jurong River and the Chabia River as well as said, using the newly released CMIPs 6. Uh, I, I found and realized that Professor Yang from Tsinghua University used the CMIP. Six by in our study, which is used the uh, uh, IEG uh, regional uh, climate model version four. So maybe in the next agenda, we can consider use in the new new uh, climate model. And this uh, is about the development of fully couple uh, climate hydrologic, uh, economic, and the impact model to understand the interaction process and mechanism between different component system in the river basics. So uh, as the last slide, I want to say thanks uh, in SFC and uh, our support. And uh, also my, and our, son, our research group. Uh, Professor Tui is the, actually is the, is the chair of this project. Uh, he is absent from this, uh, this, this great human due to illness. So I, I just uh, make this speech on behalf of him. So thank you. That's all my presentation. Thank you for your sharing, Professor Huang. Now let's uh, let's please uh, let's let's invite uh, Professor Vilas to to share his. Professor Veras, please.
good morning, uh, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm very pleased to uh, join this uh, webinar. Uh, by the way, Swadi uh, Cup and Ni Hao, everyone. Uh, so I'd like to, uh, in fact, uh, continue presenting uh, uh, part of the result uh, based on our collaboration uh, between the uh, two teams, uh, one from Thailand and one from China, and to stick with the uh, topic uh, given by the organizer in terms of watershed-based adaptation uh, to climate change, uh, in terms of a uh, comparative study between uh, Jilong uh, Basin and uh, Japya River Basin in Thailand. Uh, so I also represent uh, a team from AAT. Uh, in addition to myself, we have uh, Dr. Oleg Kipin and Dr. Sarawut Ninsawat, <coughs> who are the uh, co-principal investigators of this uh, project uh, at AAT. Uh, so I'd like to uh, start with uh, uh, overview and also methodology, including study area uh, of our uh, uh, three and four year <coughs> uh, project uh, collaboration and uh, going to focus on the case study for adaptation uh, within the Japaya River Basin. Also to cover uh, what we did uh, in terms of comparative adaptation measure between the two basins and uh, <coughs> before ending uh, with conclusion and recommendation to see how we integrate adaptation measures into the <coughs> Japia uh, River Basin. So this uh, slide provide a kind of summary of the rationale uh, for this uh, <coughs> collaborative study uh, focusing on the Japia River Basin. So the basin has been very much experiencing uh, increasing number of extreme weather events, uh, which uh, witnessed by uh, historical record. And also, uh, this uh, could also uh, be very much related to the, <coughs> the, the climate change uh, to some extent. Uh, for example, the, uh, including the rising temperature, drought, and flood, <coughs> and so on. Uh, the impact, uh, particularly the vulnerability, are getting <coughs> high uh, in the uh, past year record. And this is quite critical to uh, take uh, some urgent action uh, regarding adaptation to water related hazards and risks. The result from the previous study uh, in the past, uh, mostly uh, <coughs> focusing on the study of the impact, <coughs> uh, particularly on the water related hazards and climate change uh, on one hand, but may not uh, be able to go into the impacts and also the <coughs> adaptation measure, which uh, so are the focus of uh, my presentation today. Uh, the, this research is uh, consistent with the strategic need of the Thailand and uh, also China where management of the entire watershed uh, require a systematic and integrated uh, management approach, uh, which is also the part of <clears throat> our comparative uh, study here. Uh, so this uh, show the uh, two maps, uh, <clears throat> each from the uh, Jiaopaya and uh, Jilong River Basin. On the left-hand side is Jiaopaya and Jilong, obviously. Uh, this is not the, the same scale. Uh, by the way, uh, China is much bigger than Thailand. <laughs> But uh, this Jilong River Basin, in fact, uh, much smaller <clears throat> than the Jopia River Basin. And uh, on the left-hand side, which I like to focus here, the Jopia River Basin may be divided into uh, three uh, main parts, uh, one on the upper side, uh, which we also select uh, part of the upper area, <clears throat> upper uh, basin, uh, for some certain cases, which I will present <clears throat> in the next few slides, uh, to represent the upper part of the basin. Then uh, in the middle part <clears throat> of the basin, uh, we also select uh, certain cases uh, to represent. And the uh, lower part, in fact, is quite large and so complicated. Uh, we at the same time select a, a certain cases uh, to represent. This also including the Bangkok uh, metropolitan uh, region. And uh, as mentioned, uh, some other slide I'm going to uh, also uh, share how we uh, got the result into the comparative study of uh, some of the uh, similar cases <clears throat> uh, among the two basins. Uh, this is the background of the, this uh, comparative study. Uh, overall objective is uh, to develop adaptation policy and measures uh, for hydrological hazards in different temporal and spatial aspects. Uh, this is the key part that we also <clears throat> uh, try to do during the study in uh, the two basins. Uh, with the specific and secondary objective uh, to assess a flood and drought impact uh, on uh, different aspects, 
And the second one to develop adaptation measures, uh, many of these coming from the existing, uh, the uh, already implemented uh, measure, but uh, so, some also uh, include the uh, new and proposed type of the measure. And uh, last but not least, uh, to uh, look at the uh, wider picture of the basin in order to integrate overall adaptation measures uh, for water resources security in uh, the, the whole basin in a different scale and uh, a spatial aspect as mentioned. Uh, this is the overall uh, methodology of uh, this study, uh, which we have uh, developed uh, based on a number of the literature, including IPCC and other type of the regional and local types of the study. It uh, looks a bit uh, complicated, uh, but in fact, uh, we adopt very really simple uh, uh, driver pressure <clears throat> impact uh, uh, response. Uh, we call the DPSIR uh, into this uh, framework. And the framework uh, could uh, be adopted in a different scale from the larger on the upper part, <clears throat> we call the basin or the region. In the middle part, we call the sub basin or the sub region. And the lower part, we call the local or the municipal <clears throat> size of the scale. And uh, within uh, this uh, relationship, uh, we also adopt the uh, factor influencing the uh, disaster and climate change uh, risk. Uh, in other words, uh, from the uh, hazards. Uh, vulnerabilities, uh, exposure, and adaptive uh, capacity. And uh, within uh, each of the cases and uh, throughout our study, we try to uh, cover <coughs> uh, some of these uh, elements uh, so that we can uh, get uh, different uh, types of the cases, uh, the results, and try to, at the end, integrate uh, using uh, this framework, which I would present almost at the end of the today's presentation. Uh, back to the Chapaya River Basin, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, the upper basin, uh, middle and lower basins, and uh, each of these uh, could also represent uh, some of the common uh, adaptation measures, uh, but some uh, might also be different uh, because of the different uh, geography and also the development uh, context. Uh, then uh, uh, this uh, slide provides a summary of the method uh, for uh, our research team uh, to do the assessment and comparison of the different adaptation measures. So we basically select some uh, certain cases, which I have mentioned earlier, and then uh, conduct the case uh, comparison uh, uh, within uh, our Jopaya River Basin and also with the Jilong River Basin, and try to uh, come up with uh, some uh, results uh, in terms of the simple matrix uh, uh, between the basin and, if possible, uh, a larger scale. <laughs> and uh, this is the example of the uh, matrix uh, showing the result uh, from our evaluation of existing adaptation measures in the lower part of the Jopia River Basin. So out of uh, different types of the measure, uh, <clears throat> included on the really first uh, columns, uh, from the structural types of uh, physical measures, and nature-based uh, solution, social and institutional, and uh, uh, some uh, specific uh, subtypes of adaptation. Uh, so we try to list, <clears throat> these are all the existing Adaptation measure we have uh, uh, compiled uh, through the uh, the research. Uh, a number of them uh, from these uh, structural types of the measures, but some also from the nature based, <clears throat> from the social and also uh, institutional types of the measure. Then uh, we look at uh, how this of this uh, each of these measure might be uh, at this. Uh, uh, different types of the hazards. So we uh, face also multiple multiple types of the hazards from the uh, regular type of flooding uh, <clears throat> and uh, flash flood and also the drought. Uh, these are the three types of the uh, the hazards we uh, try to focus. Uh, and this is the case of the lower Jopia basin. And uh, among of these uh, different measures, some of them might be more suitable uh, uh, use at the regional scale. Uh, some uh, might be a smaller scale. Uh, then uh, we uh, uh, conduct this uh, evaluation uh, in order to see how uh, any of these measures might provide a positive or negative uh, effects <clears throat> uh, into the uh, hazards and the risks uh, in terms of uh, environmental, uh, socio-economic uh, types of the uh, benefit. And we also look at uh, how any of these measures, which uh, could also be different among different measures, including the linkage uh, among uh, different uh, measures. Uh, so we found that uh, based on this uh, uh, summary metric, uh, uh, most of the uh, measures are quite uh, physical or what we call a like construct uh, structural measures. 
such as the dive dam, detention area, sewage, and also drainage system. Uh, there are some uh, social and institutional types of uh, depletion, which uh, <coughs> could be considered as uh, quite relevant. Uh, and also the uh, nature-based adaptation, uh, which uh, might be more relevant to the environmental benefit, including the <clears throat> regarding right over diversity and increasing ecosystem resistance and uh, <clears throat> uh, resilience. Uh, yeah, this uh, slide provides a summary of uh, both Jopaya uh, uh, and uh, Kulong River Basin. We try to uh, see how uh, different measures uh, could be included uh, by looking at the uh, uh, two dimensions. Uh, one, uh, either they are existing measures or the proposed uh, or new types of adaptation measure, which <laughs> we also try to do that. And uh, some of these measures on the left hand side uh, consider more on the structure or the hard uh, types of the uh, adaptation measure. But some, uh, as mentioned, uh, consider as a non structural or the soft uh, types of the <clears throat> uh, adaptation measures. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to uh, look at uh, some details in the next few slides. Uh, I very much like this uh, slide uh, uh, taken uh, by myself during the uh, field survey uh, to the uh, to uh, river basins uh, in the early years. Uh, up, uh, upper side here showing the case in uh, Longyan City in China, in Kirong, obviously, uh, basin. And the uh, lower part, this is from uh, North Konsovan uh, City in the uh, middle part of the Jopia River in, in Thailand. Uh, as you can see, uh, quite uh, fortunate, uh, both measures are somewhat uh, quite uh, similar. Uh, uh, by the way, these uh, two types of the measure have been implemented uh, by a different group of people, in fact, a different approach, <laughs> and uh, maybe different uh, group of the stakeholders. But interestingly, that uh, they share something uh, quite common. I think you also can see here. Also to note that uh, these two rivers are quite main in the two basin. And they also not only uh, utilize one type of the measure, on the opposite side, uh, they also mix with uh, some uh, structural measure. Uh, similar to the uh, this uh, Longyang city, uh, we cannot see clearly here, but on the opposite side, we also observe a similar type of the structural measure. But on, on this side, uh, we like to highlight uh, this type of what we call adaptive <clears throat> types of the measure, which is quite similar in the two uh, city here. So in summary from the uh, comparison of existing adaptation measure, in the Jopaya River Basin, uh, ecosystem-based, <clears throat> internationally-based uh, solution, uh, such as uh, natural bio storage, uh, natural and green surface area, and application of wetland have been introduced, in the, uh, particularly in the upper and middle part of the basin, while uh, engineer-based <clears throat> social approach is uh, more in the lower basin. Uh, for the Chilong River Basin, uh, more engineering uh, measures including the low impact uh, development and green infrastructure <clears throat> uh, in the upstream, uh, while the construction of a uh, more uh, substanti substantial seawall, sea flood wall, structural measure are more in the uh, downstream side of the Kirong River Basin. So there might be something uh, common, but also uh, different here. Uh, uh, we also look at uh, some other cases <clears throat> in particular. Uh, so this uh, slide provides uh, back to the conceptual framework we, we have used as the uh, common for this study. And uh, within the framework, uh, we identify a total of the five cases uh, and try to uh, go into the detail of the in-depth uh, case study, uh, case one, uh, which is uh, included here. So this is the boundary of the, of the case one, which can uh, cover uh, this part of <clears throat> uh, the uh, factor or the components. And the case two, case two included here, uh, which uh, uh, cover this part, and then uh, case three uh, regarding uh, uh, more on the middle Jopaya uh, uh, River basins uh, included here, and then uh, case four and five are more for the lower part of the Jopaya River basin, uh, which uh, <coughs> represent uh, more on the on the left hand side. This is more uh, closer to the uh, 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 people types of the activities because it's more urbanized area. Yeah. Uh, we see how uh, uh, we could integrate uh, different cases. Uh, this is the same case one, case two, three, uh, four, and five. Uh, and a brief uh, information for the application measures. How this uh, each of these cases uh, might be more suitable, as mentioned. Uh, the first uh, two cases uh, may be more with the upstream <clears throat> part of the basin. The case three is more on the middle, and then the case uh, four and five applicable <clears throat> 
uh, to the lower uh, basins. And either they are uh, uh, suitable to a different scale, <clears throat> a spatial scale, uh, from uh, uh, maybe regional, uh, sub-regional, and uh, local, and uh, also different uh, temporal scale, uh, in other words, at least uh, short or the long terms. And uh, we try to uh, summarize based on how each of these cases uh, can represent the driver or the pressure, uh, uh, the state, and also the impact um, or, the, or the response, uh, which is the focus of uh, each of these uh, cases. And each of these uh, have been uh, published, uh, uh, at least uh, some of them, and some are still uh, ongoing uh, in terms of the uh, preparation uh, for possible uh, publication. Uh, so I now go into uh, detail of some of the cases. Uh, this is the, from, the, from the case one uh, on the upper part of the river basin. So we focus on uh, this, uh, uh, what we call the wetlands, uh, which uh, 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 very much uh, represent uh, quite a large uh, number of area overall uh, in terms of the whole uh, upper and lower part of the, of the basin. And uh, this study uh, focusing on the certain uh, element of the wetland which uh, represent <clears throat> as on the map and also the picture here. So we try to see how this uh, wetland uh, can play a role uh, during both uh, flood and drought uh, in order to reduce <clears throat> Uh, possibly the, the certain type of the level of the house and also the, the possible impact. Uh, for the second case shown on this uh, slide, uh, uh, which is uh, coming from the middle part of the <coughs> Japhia River Basin, uh, considered as a national wetland, uh, which is uh, in fact the largest wetland in, in Thailand, uh, uh, called uh, uh, the Lake uh, Borapet here. So this is considered as a national green uh, surface area, uh, which uh, as also shown on the uh, upper part uh, uh, from the larger maps uh, to this uh, middle Japhia basin. And uh, this is the boundary of the, this uh, uh, large wetland. Uh, and uh, this uh, wetland uh, very much uh, played a role <clears throat> in the past record as uh, shown here uh, in terms of the uh, flood map. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, some of the <clears throat> years uh, when we have really high flow from the upper part, uh, this uh, wetland could uh, very much uh, store and then reduce the uh, the peak uh, uh, volume and flow uh, uh, to the low part of the of the of the basin. Uh, some of the uh, other types of the similar uh, measures include uh, within this case is about the land use plan and management, and uh, uh, hopefully this uh, both uh, the national wetland and uh, proper land use plan and management uh, could be very much essential uh, for the risk assessment and adaptive policy uh, from uh, this uh, particular case. Uh, then the, another case, uh, this is uh, more suitable in the lower uh, Japhia River Basin. Uh, so in the case that uh, we found that a systemic uh, uh, sewerage and then a system management uh, should be quite important. Uh, this is more Maybe the combination of both, uh, <clears throat> partly the natural, but uh, uh, types of the engineer and the built environment uh, in order to uh, integrate uh, both uh, the water quality and quality into the uh, quite, uh, dynamic and urbanized area in the <clears throat> nearby uh, uh, Bangkok. Uh, it's a northern part of the Bangkok metropolitan, uh, but it's a downstream of the uh, Japhia River Basin. So in this case, uh, <clears throat> we look at the how the, the response or adaptive uh, types of the measure could play the role in increasing adaptive capacity, uh, drainage and uh, waste, including the waste water, both liquid and solid uh, system, uh, quite important, uh, together with uh, providing the knowledge uh, for awareness raising of both uh, private and public sector to increase uh, their capacity. Uh, and uh, this case is important uh, when we look at uh, the combination of the uh, different types of land use <clears throat> from uh, industrial uh, to the residential and partly uh, still like uh, uh, agricultural or the green area. And uh, this could uh, actually be important in the, in the long-term adaptation in both uh, plan and uh, some of these uh, concepts as uh, what we call autonomous uh, types of the, of the measure. Uh, so I'm coming into the conclusion uh, uh, of my, my presentation. So basically, uh, the Overview of adaptation measures uh, show that a combination of adaptive measure is implemented. Uh, it is an existing part from the basin uh, through both uh, structural and uh, types of the physical adaptation. And uh, these are more suitable and uh, used uh, apply in the 
uh, basin uh, larger scale. Uh, it is also considered the most frequent and most uh, straightforward adaptation measure in a different part of the Jokhaya basin, uh, basin because of <clears throat> their investment and also uh, quite, quite uh, fixed or uh, rigid types of the measure. Uh, Why the uh, application of uh, uh, we call the ecological natural uh, adaptation is uh, gaining more attention, but there is uh, still uh, quite informal and little focus on uh, this type of the measure uh, in terms of uh, uh, social and institutional types of the adaptation. Yeah, most adaptation practices are for specific uh, dimension and level, and this may be uh, something that uh, more focus in the past. <clears throat> uh, whenever we have the flood uh, or certain type of flood. We apply certain types of the measure, but we uh, are gaining uh, some kind of the multiple flood and uh, at the multiple scales. So it's important uh, to uh, look at how the benefit, <coughs> which are still quite limited at the moment, uh, uh, which is still not effective enough to deal with the growing hydrological hazards, which I mentioned, like multiple hazards and also the risk, uh, different types of the risk, uh, especially in the context of uh, partly the climate change and also the urbanization uh, drivers. Uh, the growth of the city which uh, support <coughs> the urbanization part is uh, highly increasing, uh, causing major area in the watershed to experience uh, more sudden flooding, uh, recurring flood, uh, as well as uh, more frequent doubts, uh, which uh, <coughs> still need to be uh, looked at. Uh, uh, in terms of the recommendation, uh, we believe that uh, this research has developed uh, from the framework uh, to the methodology and key elements uh, for water-related <coughs> uh, hazards and risk assessment, uh, including for the development and evaluation of adaptation measures <coughs> for the basin. Uh, this has increased a uh, body of knowledge on uh, both approach and innovation, and uh, could be considered as part of the possible guidelines and measure for disaster risk reduction and adaptation. Uh, the result uh, of the various study uh, could demonstrate uh, the current adaptation measures <clears throat> uh, in terms of their uh, effectiveness and uh, benefit, which is uh, a crucial information uh, and support the decision maker uh, in uh, selecting uh, uh, existing and also additional types of the adaptation measures. Uh, various stakeholders may use uh, and promote uh, this type of knowledge <clears throat> in order to uh, have uh, a more understanding in uh, their own organization and communities. And the last one here, indication of the, these uh, adaptation measures uh, should include a more selected uh, case study, which we also recommending here for development of the water-related hazards and risk reduction in the basin. Uh, recommend to integrate into uh, water allocation and use plan, water resources and conservation plan, uh, water provision and deployment plan, and also flood and drought uh, control plan, uh, which uh, would be more important uh, for the uh, wider context of the river basin. Uh, to improve the water governance uh, also in the transboundary uh, river basin. Uh, so this uh, show uh, some of the selected uh, publication which we have done uh, under this uh, research project on the upper part, and some of them are still under preparation and uh, also the, the review. Uh, some of these also jointly <coughs> uh, contributed by our uh, Chinese partner uh, researchers. Uh, so these are uh, maybe add in addition to Professor Chin Liang uh, earlier presentation, the photo uh, taken during our joy uh, surveys. Uh, some of these are in in uh, Thailand and some uh, very much are taken place in uh, Jilong Basin in in China. It's the last team that we work together, uh, and uh, this is more in uh, the few picture and uh, our research group in in Thailand <coughs> in the uh, Chapaya uh, River Basin. And uh, last year, I like to acknowledge uh, obviously the Kai support from NRCT and NSFC. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the list of the uh, uh, main researcher from uh, China, Professor Cheng Hui Kui from IUE CAS, Professor Xiao Hui Lin, uh, IAP, and also CAS here. I think he also joining this session. Professor Xiao Ming Wang uh, from Sorry, CSIRO. <laughs> so I mistyped this one. Uh, <clears throat> for, he formerly in uh, this organization. And uh, this is the list of our uh, doctoral and uh, as, uh, research assistant uh, at AIT, uh, which I also like to acknowledge uh, their 
uh, contribution. This is not all because we have a larger group of the student both from China and Thailand joining this and a number of the stakeholders which I sorry could not list uh, all of them uh, on this slide. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Willards. Uh, next, we're pleased to have uh, Dr. Wen Chao Shui to deliver the project three, Bio, biogeochemical changes and adaptation mechanisms in response to anthropogenic impacts in watershed and comparative study between Zhou River and uh, Chao Phraya River. Dr. Shui is an associate professor in School of uh, Environment, Resources and uh, Development, AIT. And uh, she is also the director of AIT Belt and Road Research Center. Her research, her research encompasses uh, the areas of uh, environmental uh, membrane and uh, electro electrochemical technologies, resources, energy productive water, wastewater treatment, monitoring and uh, elimination of uh, environmental emerging contaminant and uh, sustainable watershed environment uh, management. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction of the chairman. And uh, it's very honored to share some of our uh, previous research uh, collaboration output. Um, so uh, unfortunately, our uh, uh, Chinese partner today, uh, Professor Xin Yu from the Institute of Urban Environment was not able to join us today. So I will be the person to uh, uh, present uh, some of our research output of this uh, joint project. Uh, on uh, biogeochemical changes and adaptation mechanism in response to anthropogenic impact in the watersheds uh, between uh, Jiulong River in China and also Zhao Phraya River in Thailand. So uh, a little bit different from um, uh, the previous uh, two projects, which were focusing on the water resource management and also uh, the disaster management. So our project um, put the main um, uh, efforts or, uh, or focus on the environmental quality and the eco, uh, eco, ecological risk uh, management, uh, also in the, in the same uh, uh, boundary, the, the uh, watershed in, in China and in Thailand. Um, so uh, let me start with a little bit the background of our uh, research idea or this project. So we all know that uh, uh, all of our uh, human activities, agricultural farming, um, uh, aquaculture industry, or even our uh, urban, urbanization or energy consumption, they all re, uh, release different types of uh, contaminations into the environment. And this environment through uh, different uh, pathways, but finally will, drain, will be drained into the, our, uh, say the rivers or uh, water bodies. So uh, then the result or consequence uh, it causes uh, different environmental issues, uh, like uh, uh, quite uh, frequent uh, eutrophication uh, problems, the habitat losses for um, uh, aquatic creatures, and some of the contaminants even has high uh, toxicity to, to aquatic uh, organisms and also to human beings. So to avoid uh, this kind of uh, damage and the degradation on the ecosystem and also the environment, uh, it is very important that uh, we could learn from our previous or uh, uh, previous uh, uh, experience or lessons. So we need to learn how our past behaviors impact our um, uh, watershed environment and also the ecosystem. So this is the basic concept that we propose uh, this uh, research uh, collaboration. Then uh, 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 China and Thailand are two very important developing countries in Asia. Uh, but uh, they are 
uh, both facing the environmental uh, challenges and the pressures, uh, and they have the responsibility to uh, conduct the sustainable development uh, to especially uh, in, in the field of watershed management, uh, they need to uh, uh, manage a better uh, environmental um, uh, quality management to avoid uh, the aquatic, uh, aquatic uh, ecosystem de degradation or water uh, shortage and such kind of uh, problems. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, China and Thailand are actually uh, um, using different or have different develop, uh, development patterns in the past. So this table gives you some um, uh, uh, indications that um, uh, China, we know that it experienced a very rapid uh, develop, uh, economic development, uh, population growth, and also GP, uh, GDP uh, in, uh, increment in the past uh, 20 to 30 years. And um, uh, the Fujian, uh, Fujian province in China, which has a very high population density and also uh, the GDP per uh, capita, in, especially in the during the urban development. And on the other hand, in Thailand, uh, we uh, experienced a relatively uh, modest uh, 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 GDP growth or economic growth. And uh, the GDP uh, pro uh, portion in Thailand with higher uh, weight uh, uh, by uh, agriculture and service rather than heavy industry. And also there is a, a higher energy efficiency uh, in Thailand. So with these different uh, development patterns, we, we are very interested in uh, knowing whether uh, we result in different uh, environmental consequence. So this is um, uh, a brief um, uh, uh, background of our uh, com comparative research. Then uh, the major objective of this project uh, is to understand the biogeochemical changes, the driving factors, and also adaptation mechanisms in response to different anthropogenic impacts in Asia uh, watershed. Uh, take the uh, case study of uh, Jiulong River and Chao Phaya River. Then uh, coupling um, the research on sedimentary record and also the special patterns. Uh, in particular, we conduct um, the research on uh, identifying the special and temporal gradients of uh, biogeochemical changes in response to anthropogenic impact in both watershed. And we try to track the potential sources uh, of, uh, of uh, contaminants and uh, to interpret the possible driving mechanisms or source caused by anthropogenic impact. Um, and then, um, uh, and then uh, study the pattern in uh, sediment, uh, uh, sediment and soils Okay, using uh, different approaches. And then we try to recommend possible strategies to, uh, of uh, sustainable development for Asian uh, watershed and uh, with uh, different uh, scenarios. So these are uh, the layout of two uh, uh, watershed that we studied. I think the previ our previous uh, speakers have uh, provided a very well description of, the, of these two uh, river watershed. Uh, so the left-hand side is uh, the Chao Phaya watershed, and right-hand side is the Jiulong watershed. So in this project, we conducted a very comprehensive uh, uh, field survey and collect the environmental uh, samples, and we, con uh, we conduct the, the, uh, the intensive laboratory analysis and to try to get the uh, information of our um, uh, environmental quality uh, in these two watersheds. And uh, then through this um, uh, uh, bottom-up approach, we would like to uh, say understand, firstly understand the environmental quality, and then connect with uh, uh, different uh, uh, social economic information data like um, energy consumption, land use, and uh, and other uh, social economic data. We would like to find out what are the major factor or major uh, reason to cause our environmental quality uh, degradation or cause the increased uh, uh, ecological risk in, in the study area. So here are some uh, uh, photos of our uh, field uh, work. There were very good uh, collaboration between the Chinese and the Thailand partners. We went to the field to collect sample uh, mm -hmm. together and also meanwhile build very well uh, friendship. Um, 
So today I would like uh, uh, to bring some of the uh, research output. So focusing on the Jopaya watershed, uh, then uh, to uh, present uh, some of our output. Uh, so this uh, map shows um, uh, the contamina uh, contamination, uh, uh, contaminant distribution in the Chopaya uh, watershed. Okay, so we actually invest, uh, investigated the eight types of heavy metals, which, uh, uh, which are of high environmental concern and eco, eco, uh, ecological risk concerns. And we draw the, uh, the, the uh, hotspot mapping. Okay? And uh, for many of the heavy metals, which we have known that uh, highly related to the industrialization and urbanization, like um, lead, mercury, uh, like um, uh, uh, cadmium, uh, copper and zinc. So we find a very um, mutual special pattern, which are, uh, say, the concentration in the river sediment increase from north to source. Uh, and the hotspots are usually found at, at the, uh, the, the bottom, uh, this region, okay, uh, the, the close to the Gulf of Thailand, where is also the heart uh, of, uh, of Thailand, the, the Bangkok uh, metabolism uh, reason. Then, um, so um, some other heavy metals like uh, uh, like uh, uh, nickel and uh, chromium. Then we find different patterns later on. We will uh, uh, talk about uh, why they are showing different uh, patterns in the uh, in the environment. And similarly, uh, we uh, based on our field data, we uh, drop the uh, the contaminant map. Uh, in, in the surface soil uh, in the whole region. And uh, using this information, it is um, possible to help us to identify the contamination hotspots. And uh, this provides the firsthand uh, uh, evidence for, uh, uh, for the environment manager and the policymaker to take a better uh, countermeasure to improve the uh, environmental quality in this whole uh, watershed. So uh, quite similar, um, uh, uh, special patterns uh, uh, as the uh, uh, river sediment that we find uh, for many uh, uh, urban or industry related metals, the hotspots uh, accumulated at the, the Bangkok area, where uh, again, it's the economic center and have uh, very intensive uh, industries accumulated here. And based on this um, uh, uh, contamination, uh, we also try to provide uh, the uh, environmental hazard uh, map and also ecological risk maps. So uh, if you look at the left hind, the, these are the hazard map for uh, river sediment. And also this is the hazard map for the uh, soil. So we do, uh, the hazard map is uh, draw, drawn based on the current uh, uh, standard, environmental standard in Thailand. So we do find that there are uh, quite um, a lot of uh, uh, existing of the environmental standard and also the hotspot of uh, different uh, of uh, the, the uh, hazard caused by heavy metals. Uh, then the right hand side, uh, this right hand side uh, is for the, uh, the uh, ecological risk uh, uh, index map. Okay, so for the sediment and for the soil. So if we look at the ecological uh, risk, it uh, looks um, not so. Uh, it looks uh, quite um, uh, positive. So we do not find a very significant uh, ecological uh, hazard in the study area, except for some hotspots, as we mentioned. Again, the hotspot we find uh, majorly uh, around the Bangkok region. Well, uh, for this observed the special pattern of uh, environmental contaminants, we try to find out what could be the major cost. So we, um, uh, find, uh, we got the land use map and also the distribution of uh, uh, power plants, uh, which are uh, distributed in the, in the study area in the uh, Chopaya watershed. So we do find that uh, the accumulated urban area, urban uh, land use, and also accumulated uh, power plant, which are majorly presenting in the hotspot of our uh, contamination map. Uh, in the in the uh, Bangkok metropolitan uh, metabolism re region, so we expect that this could be the major uh, uh, factors which cause the current uh, environmental quality 
uh, in terms of its um, special pattern. And uh, similarly, we have uh, collected the, the river sediment core to study the history uh, of uh, contamination. So uh, then we uh, try to identify the, uh, the age of the uh, sediment. Uh, we are able to draw the uh, profile of contamination uh, up to uh, 19 tenths uh, until, until current. So uh, these are the, uh, cont uh, the contaminant uh, profile. So we do find that um, uh, in the history, okay, uh, before 1970s, there were very low contaminant um, flux, in, uh, like drained into the uh, river sediment. But after 1970s, we did uh, observe uh, increasing contaminants uh, being drained into the uh, river system. And especially this um, uh, flux increased uh, during the 1990s. Okay? So if you observe this, uh, uh, this uh, red curve, so for, ma for many of the, uh, the uh, sampling site, we do find a turning point very clear showing in the 1990s. Okay? And uh, we also did some uh, um, uh, statistical analysis is showing the same uh, result than uh, uh, the sediment after uh, 1990s okay, provide, uh, dominated. Uh, provide the highest variability uh, to the to the contaminants. So then, similarly, we go back to look at uh, uh, the reason uh, to support this uh, uh, finding in the field. So we uh, look at the land use change uh, uh, along the time. Uh, so uh, sorry. Uh, so unfortunately, limited to the uh, the uh, limited information, we were not able to get a, a very old land use type. Uh, land use. So our land use information uh, could only show us uh, how does the land use change after 1989. But still, we can observe after about 1990s, there is a quick increase of the urban uh, or quick expansion of the urban urban land uh, in, in the in the watershed. And similarly, energy consumption showing a big jump uh, also starting from 1990s. So this is a, a big uh, increase of um, uh, the natural gas use. Um, uh, in addition to land use and energy consumption, we also look at the uh, GDP data, and we also find a similar pattern. So uh, at the 1990s, there is the, actually the peak of the early uh, industri uh, industrialization in, in Thailand. So it's also fitting our uh, 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 finding um, uh, in, the, in the field. And um, this period, around the 1990s, uh, Thailand actually experienced the highest GDP growth. And so it uh, has the uh, fastest uh, economic growth. And also we find the jump of uh, uh, utilization of fertilizers uh, in, in around 1990s. So all of these um, um, evidence uh, uh, tell us the, the reason of development uh, result in uh, rapid uh, accumulation of contaminants in the environment. So after studying the uh, special and temporal pattern of contaminants, we also want to know, so what, uh, exactly what kind of activities cause the discharge of uh, pollutants into the watershed, into the river. So we conduct uh, some uh, uh, analysis. Uh, this is a result of, uh, um, we, we used a multivariant statistic in, uh, in addition with the geographic tools. We would like to track the contamination source uh, in, um, in the Jopaya watershed. Okay? So here give us some information like um, uh, we defi did find uh, the uh, principal source, which is number one, and uh, likely to be related to the urbanization and the industrial discharge okay? and with the represented um, uh, contaminants. It explained uh, over 30% of our um, uh, variance of the environmental data then followed by uh, the potential uh, uh, source number two, which is uh, uh, related to the geochemical sources or the, uh, the, uh, the um, breaking of the mother rock. And the number three principal source uh, likely to link with uh, some natural uh, and agriculture and domestic discharge. So majorly uh, representing the uh, soil and sediments uh, nutrient, carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And then the number four uh, major source are, are uh, uh, 
related to some diffuse source or uh, say atmospheric transportation, uh, which are majorly uh, presenting the arsenic and the mercury. And it, it explains about 50% of the uh, contaminants of um, uh, various variants observed in the study area. So uh, we did um, uh, find this approach is a quite economic and efficient uh, uh, approach to study the source, but it is it does not uh, provide us very detailed information on exactly what kind of activity can cause the contaminants. So we, in addition, uh, try to explore the application of a stable isotope analysis and try to find uh, whether we can um, uh, predict or we can tell uh, exactly what kind of activities can cause the, the emission of contaminants. So here is uh, one uh, example of the stable lead isotope analysis. Okay, if uh, you look at the, the figure, there are many circles, uh, rectangle, uh, uh, rectangulars, uh, which are showing the likely uh, activity or source of contamination. And the, uh, the spot, the uh, red spot, uh, blue spot, and green spot are our environmental sample. So we did find uh, our environment samples uh, dropped into uh, several types of uh, sources like the uh, air uh, particulate matter deposition and also the vehicle, exa uh, vehicle exhausting and some related to the coal combustion and the cement, uh, cement industry. Uh, but still, we find that most of the, uh, our environmental sample actually um, dropping into the natural source, which means it is not related to the human uh, released the contamination. So uh, somehow it is a good uh, news, but still these points, we find the uh, potential source are majorly uh, accumulated in the, uh, around the river mouth, uh, again, to the downstream of the rivers. And similarly, we uh, also uh, uh, observed the soil sediment, uh, so, sorry, soil samples, and uh, uh, to identify what kind of uh, pollution source is quite similar. Uh, to what we observed for the with the surface sediment from the river, and this uh, right hand figure gives some information that uh, uh, because we differentiate the color of our environmental samples into different uh, type of land use, and we do find the red red spot, majorly red spots, which representing the urban uh, soil. So they are most uh, contaminated by uh, the human activities like uh, vehicles. Uh, like uh, the, the coal combustion or cement construction. Uh, then our last uh, uh, objective of this uh, uh, project is to uh, compare the two uh, watershed in, in, in Thailand and in uh, China. So with different developed pattern weather, they result in different environmental quality. So we did a comparison, uh, the right-hand side showing the data from Jopaya River and then left hand side showing the uh, result from uh, Jiulong River. So in terms of the sediment and soil uh, nutrients, we did find that uh, in Chopper River, we find a richer uh, nutrient, carbon and the nitrogen. So it's uh, reflecting the uh, agriculture dominated uh, activities in this uh, watershed. Uh, then in terms of the um, uh, heavy metals, we find a different uh, behavior. So in Jiulong River watershed, we find the very high uh, heavy metals, especially those related to industry like uh, copper, mercury, uh, lead, and zinc. So uh, comparing with Jopaya, there is a, a very high uh, contaminants. So again, it uh, proves our uh, hypothesis that uh, with a very uh, rapid uh, industrialization and uh, uh, development, and it, it could result more se severe uh, environmental quality degradation. Um, then in Chapaya, we find a relatively okay, uh, several contaminants are comparable or higher than Jiulong uh, river watershed, like arsenic, uh, chromium, and nickel. So these are, we expect, uh, we uh, estimate is related to the uh, geochemical background in, in, in the, in the Chapaya watershed. So a quick, um, uh, some quick message uh, obtained for, uh, from our research so this, uh, firstly, this project did conduct a comprehensive environmental quality investigation and uh, provide useful uh, data uh, for the uh, environmental manager and uh, policy makers okay, 
to provide the uh, um, evidence-based uh, uh, countermeasure and the policy uh, in, in terms of uh, managing the environmental quality uh, of uh, watershed. And we, uh, uh, we ex explored to use a different uh, approach um, to study the source uh, the, of uh, contaminants in the watershed. So we tried the multivariant statistical analysis in, uh, in association with uh, geostatis, uh, geospatial tools. So we find it's a quite the economic and efficient tool, but the limitation is uh, we could not give the very detailed uh, source information. Then in addition with uh, more advanced um, uh, technology like the stable isotope technology, we are able to provide more details uh, but also there is the limitation that we find um, uh, this technology is in still in the inf uh, infant uh, uh, period in Thailand. So uh, we need more uh, scientific uh, research to uh, adopt this uh, technology to study the environmental, um, uh, to conduct the st uh, environmental study uh, in Thailand. Then the last uh, major finding that uh, our uh, result likely to prove that um, uh, the, the complex development and rapid industrialization urbanization process uh, progress in Jiulong watershed likely to result in more severe environmental burden in comparison with uh, uh, modest development uh, model uh, used in, in the Chao River of Thailand. Uh, so these are uh, all of my uh, presentation today. And again, I would like to appreciate um, all the efforts of our research team uh, including uh, the researchers from China and also from Thailand side. So we have conducted very um, successful uh, uh, scholar mobility exchange and study from each other. So uh, I also uh, would like to acknowledge the support from uh, NRCT and the NSFC uh, to support this uh, research collaboration. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you for coming back. So uh, it's me again. Uh, we are going to continue uh, with our uh, panel, uh, panel section uh, for this uh, uh, webinar. So I'm very pleased uh, to uh, call back our uh, panelists, uh, including our um, uh, uh, distinguished speakers today, uh, Professor Yang, Professor um, uh, Huang, uh, Dr. Jirasong, and Professor Vilas. And uh, in addition, we also uh, invited uh, Dr. Tata, uh, Tata and uh, Dr. Montip uh, to join our uh, discussion today. So may I uh, request our uh, panelists, yes, please uh, turn on your camera. Uh, we can see your face. Uh, so before we uh, start the discussion, I would like to uh, also uh, take this chance to give a brief introduction of uh, Dr. Tata and Dr. Montip. Uh, so uh, Dr. Tata, uh, Suk, sorry, <laughs> Sukun uh, Naphan uh, is an uh, execute, uh, executive advisor on hydrology for Ro uh, Royal Irrigation Department, Thailand. So he has been working uh, at the Royal Ir Irrigation Department since 1978. And uh, he is a presenter and keynote speakers for hydrology and water management or water related uh, uh, issues such as flood uh, uh, warning, climate change issues, uh, including uh, to consult uh, to provide consulting and advising for the uh, Royal Irrigation Department. So he gives the ex um, experience to the newcomers and also uh, work as a lecturer for the young uh, researchers and scholars. So welcome, Dr. Data, and uh, Dr. Montip. I think our audience could be very familiar with her. So she is um, uh, also the uh, leader of this uh, program on uh, strengthening the collaboration network between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development. And she meanwhile is a senior advisor of uh, National Research Council of Thailand and also the director of uh, Digital Belt and Road uh, uh, International uh, Center of Excellence of Bangkok. So welcome all the um, uh, keynote speakers. Um, 
So let me, um, and, and sorry, you forgot to introduce me. So I will work as the uh, uh, moderator of this section. So to um, uh, process our discussion, we have prepared several uh, questions to our uh, panelists, and uh, we would like to uh, consult your comments and uh, share your opinions on these uh, different um, uh, questions. So my first question, perhaps uh, we'll go to uh, Dr. Data and Professor Huang. Um, so the question is, uh, uh, what do you think are the urgent needs uh, to overcome the major challenges in managing watershed resources and also environment uh, in a sustainable manner in both China and Thailand? Perhaps uh, Dr. Data can uh, share some opinion for, for Thailand and Professor Huang would help to share some opinion uh, in China. So may I uh, yeah, invite Dr. Data to, to start first? Good morning, everybody. So I just so thank you for on this team is for useful for my Rogen Education Department of Thailand to uh, application in the future. The the agent needs is uh, for increase a modern accuracy that can is for cast more accurate trend of the water condition. Because the benefit of the forecasting is a result can support decision uh, making in the water management. The, for example, in the past, uh, in my country, for uh, Rogen Irrigation Department, we have a reservoir for the keep the water in the wet season and to use in the dry season around six months. So it's uh, the past forecasting up to some track and has a lower accuracy comparison is in the present. Now the thumb check for cutting is much improved. So that is we can making about decision making for to how to uh, de delete water, how much delete water in the trend or the track of the thumb track. Yeah, in the direction is good in the now present, but the compare in the past, not the accuracy. So very important to uh, to share about the dual model in the future for the climate change for decision making. Uh, for my talk is mean in the Chapraya River, very important for to know about the minimum demand for dry season around six months, because we have around uh, we have a last them around six. Uh, for them is for management for the Jaffraya, the lower Jaffraya for agriculture and water supply, include the uh, ecology. So net minimum in the end of the wet season in the November, in the first of November, we need the total volume in the for them at least allow 3,000 million, 3,500 million for water supply, something that. So in the past record history, is, uh, we have minimum allow 4,000. So very li uh, limited for the, the six, six months in the dry season. So this is very worry about in the future to planning about to how to sustainable for the water supply in the Bangkok area. So this is very important for to thinking about in the future is the climate change, the deal about the precipitation in the wet season. We need to decision making example. Now we have a project to increase water in the Pui Phon Dam from another river basin in the case of the model show that we have a drought increase in the future. In the, in the opposite side for the extreme flood in 2011 in my country. So very serious for the modeling to account or to the forecasting in the future, the extreme flood is the over than to 2011 or not. So in the case of the maximum flood or extreme flood, just bigger or something that in the forecasting by model. So we need to make a, a new technology about to structure mode, uh, measure to protection about this disaster in the future. So we just to show you about in the part, in, the, in all this one dam, example, the Puyipun Dam in the Chapraya River, the, the maximum extreme inflow to the dam around uh, one three thousand million, example thirteen thousand million cubic meter per year, uh, one year in that year. So uh, in the low wage uh, record, in minimum volume in the nineteen ninety eight, only one thousand three hundred. Uh, it's uh, compared either with the maximum and minimum around ten times. So we really see that for management in the get of extreme and drought too far for the variation data. So that is very important for decision making. The example, we need the water in the dry season around six months. 
So we need to know seasonal forecasting this year is is a good year for flood or good year for drought. So so we decision making for the management is it, it, it very important. So that's why your team researcher very good for idea for to show about some modeling to show about the prevention of flood in the future or frequency of drought. So that how we can do decision making for the future. I mentioned into uh, increase for future climate projection is another need for water resource planning. For example, is uh, if the climate projection uh, can correctly inform such a trend of flood or drought increase in future exactly. That it means we can plan investment or construct water infrastructure to taking to take about the uh, maximum or extreme flood for reduce the disaster in the future. I mentioned you about this is thank you for your good uh, research for to decision making in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Data. Thank you, Dr. Data. Uh, may I also invite Professor Huang to share some opinion? Okay, can you hear me? Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, we all know that the water is the, is at the core of sustainable development, and uh, we do need water for survival, for social economic development. Our next generation, next next generation also need. But due to population growth, uh, economic development, as well as climate change. The water uh, scarcity, water pollution, water related disaster. We 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 this we 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 discuss uh, this this morning uh, become the worldwide issue, including China and Taiwan. So, uh, how to uh, overcome the major challenge uh, we face about the, the water issue? Including water scarcity and uh, water pollution and water related disaster. I think we need to uh, prepare well from three aspects. Uh, first is about the uh, uh, management or institute and institution. Uh, and the second is the technology level. And third is about the uh, public education. Um, in the case of China, that's my, my, my personal opinion. Uh, since 2012, uh, eco civilization uh, become the, the national strategy. It is uh, emphasized by central government and local government. Uh, we are on the right well to protect the, the water, but we need more time and more potential, potential and more effort to make the water clear. Uh, especially in the situation, you know, the normal coronavirus epidemic can still uh, influence our daily life. So, uh, so uh, because uh, right now I have several projects that's about uh, the, the agricultural uh, wastewater treatment. Uh, in the case of Fujian province, uh, now there are no, no standards uh, for the fishman, uh, no standard to, to, to regulate the, the, the fishman uh, to, um, to prevent the, the, the action. And they, because they, the, the agriculture waste, wastewater uh, usually discharge directly without treatment. So, but the situation now is there is no uh, standard uh, for agricultural uh, wastewater in Fujian province. Because of that, in China, there are just only two uh, provinces. One is uh, Liaoning province, another is uh, uh, Jiangsu province. They all already issued the, the standards for agricultural wastewater. With water, so I mean, uh, in in terms of the management level, um, maybe we, we need more effort, uh, especially for in, in Fujian 
uh, the case like agriculture wastewater. Yeah, because it's very important pollution source for the, the, the bay, the coastal bay, coastal area, coastal water. So that's the first. Uh, the second is about technology. We, we all know that uh, in China now, the sports city, uh, and those sports city is the is a Chinese uh, countermeasure to deal with the, uh, the, the flooding, uh, and the driven by the climate change and also urbanization. So the sporty, sporty city, LID, uh, I think uh, now in China, uh, because there are some demonstrative cities uh, 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 about the sporty city has been successful uh, established. And uh, also uh, in terms of the, uh, Water scarcity. We all know that uh, uh, in the context of climate change, uh, the water resource uh, is become more and more important issue. Uh, so the wastewater uh, reuse, I mean the water reclamation, uh, is become very important uh, issue in, in, in Xiamen now have some project nice about this. So uh, the water reclamation, I think uh, now in China, uh, maybe we, we need more practice. I mean, now the successful uh, case is quite huge, I think. So we, we maybe we need more practice uh, uh, to just like uh, to uh, to do some uh, technology innovation or uh, technology improvement yeah, to make the uh, wastewater uh, can, be, can be used really. So I think in China, there's still no way to go uh, for the, uh, the, the water reclamation. Okay. And the, also the, in terms of the sporty city, I think uh, because uh, the sporty city is associated with the spatial planning. And uh, at this stage, especially for some old town and the downtown, uh, because uh, it is quite hard to find the space for set up the, some engineering, uh, just like the way land. The, 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 so, so, so we, we still need to make more uh, attempt uh, to uh, uh, to uh, for uh, to 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 improve the technology uh, for the water reclamation or for the, uh, the, the, the when when water happening uh, harvesting okay so that's the, the issue about the water uh, scarcity scarcity okay and uh, also the the public education uh, in terms of the public education, because uh, the, the, uh, from the, the, the project uh, I attend in, in recent years, I found some just like the fishermen uh, in the and out in the coastal bay, the, the fishermen uh, will know have no willingness to deal with the, the agricultural wastewater. Uh, they, they, they will uh, the, the the agricultural wastewater will directly. Uh, they charge into the water, you know, the seawater. You know. So, so and also uh, in China, there also some. Uh, the, the, there's one uh, management that we call a river chief, and the river chief, uh, uh, the river chief is is quite hard because um, they have they they, they show uh, supervise the. Uh, the, the river they, they are in charge of uh, and the, but uh, there are some also some just the garbage we are uh, we are slowed into the, the, the river and uh, so all this we need uh, the, the public uh, education and uh, we, we should make all the um, just like villager or all the fishermen know that this environment is uh, is the environment we, we, we are now 
even in the, in the environment, and then we, we should care about the, the environment. So I think so. I think in China, I think uh, that's my point. We we, we need to uh, 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 make more effort uh, in in this way uh, as pet management and the technology and the public education. So that's my point. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Data and Professor Huang. I think you share very um, informative points that uh, water is um, important. Is it has multi function. Meanwhile, the water problem is also has multi aspect. So that is also the reason we have experts from uh, hydrology, from climate change, from water resource management, from disaster management, and from environmental technology management. Uh, joining this uh, program and try to figure out uh, uh, integrated uh, knowledge or solutions to manage this uh, uh, whole system, the watershed system. So thank you very much for sharing your uh, opinion. Then uh, I'd like to um, uh, provide uh, at the second question. Uh, so what kind of opportunities uh, do you envision in terms of uh, strengthening the international collaboration between China and Thailand in the field of sustainable water and watershed management. Especially, we have paved a very good um, uh, base uh, based on this current uh, program. So what is your future vision? So may I uh, yes, ask um, uh, Professor Yang and also uh, Professor Viras to provide some of your suggestion or vision. Maybe Professor Yang, please. OK, Evan uh, thank you very much. Uh, also, I'd like to see Dr. Tata and the world friends here. Uh, so I really very miss of you. So because of the, the uh, COVID-19, so we could not meet and pay and in China or in Thailand. But anyway, we, we had this very good meeting. Uh, according to uh, the previous export import, I think uh, there's a lot of needs from, from society for the for the from our uh, project output, I think, especially Dr. Tada mentioned, uh, we have very good advances in hydro hydrological modeling and prediction. Really, we do did a very good good job, uh, both in Jiulong and uh, Chaofeiya. We tested our model. We developed the new uh, model for simulate the. Hydrology include the annual runoff, seasonal variability, the high flow, low flow, and also we do see the floods in the future and the south in the future change spatial and temporarily over the watershed in Jiulong and Chaofeiya. And also we, we do see the prediction or projection of the climate change in the future is more reliable or trustable. Anyway, uh, based on those advantage, uh, advances in the science and technology, I think it is a time to, uh, how to say, incorporate our advances in technology and uh, methodology into the applications. Application to the water management, including disaster prevention. So how can we, uh, transfer this uh, this knowledge to the application. I think we need a, a new framework. How to bridge our scientific study to the police making. Uh, at the same time, I also realize uh, previously we are working more about the the, the futures. But under the futures, we also uh, very much how to say the address on the. Uh, how can we pass the knowledge to the society for better management of our uh, environment? Uh, especially from UN, United Nations, there is a, the, the SDG, Sustainable Development Goal. There are a lot of uh, related uh, very much to water, the drinking water, uh, the floods, and the, the disaster, and so on, and also the, the, the food security. Like irrigation. So those are very much related to our study. So I think we need a kind of a new 
uh, research program, we can enhance our capacity building to transfer our research result, research knowledge to the society, to the police maker. <laughs> I think it could be the, for the next stage. This is my, my, my suggestion. At the same time, I, we also find out the uh, climate change is very, very important and very, very serious. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Beijing is very hot in the past week and still this uh, hot wave maybe last uh, for another week. Even for whole China, from south to north, from west to east, this year is a very special, very extreme hot wave in China. I think those kind of extreme uh, weather, extreme uh, meteorological events, and uh, of course, there are, of course, extreme hydrological events, like salt, like flood. Those kind of very extreme uh, meteorological and hydrological disaster caused by the climate change is very, how to say, very much impressed by our research and also we saw, we, we do experience this kind of extreme uh, disasters now. So, so why can we focus on these two kind of things? How can we mitigate the climate change? So like the carbon uh, neutrality, in China, we have a lot of, uh, spend, the government spent a lot of uh, funding and also call for research for this. So from the, the bison management, internet, the integrated bison management, is, we could do something for this kind of, how to, how to reduce the, the green gas emission by, like, by forestation, by change our the, the agricultural uh, activity and so on. So those kind of things can be integrated into the future. How can we uh, bridge the science and the engineering and the application? So this is my suggestion to, to the next uh, uh, our cooperation between China and Thailand, even the regional uh, cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Huang. Uh, Professor Vilas, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wen Chao. Yeah. Uh, many points that uh, Professor Yang has mentioned, I very much agree, uh, and perhaps like to go into some specific point <clears throat> based on what he has uh, nicely suggested. Uh, first, uh, I like to say that uh, we, we had quite good opportunity working together within this uh, future Earth <clears throat> since uh, three or four years ago, uh, uh, <clears throat> among the three teams at least. Uh, and uh, within our team in particular, <clears throat> I. Uh, have been quite fortunate uh, working with the three sub team from China, from one IUE, from XMU, and also from the IAP. <clears throat> also, Jin Liang and also Chang Hui Lin also a uh, key part of this one. Unfortunately, we uh, uh, have been hit by the COVID so that uh, we could not do uh, something that we planned earlier in the last about two years, which is <laughs> quite significant. So, at least uh, I would suggest uh, what we had planned and a good idea earlier, <clears throat> we could do something uh, once uh, more opening up at the moment based on what we have done within uh, uh, the river basin uh, between the two basin here. Uh, for example, Professor Lin just uh, sent me, uh, me a WeChat <laughs> saying that uh, perhaps we should organize some kind of a joint webinar together uh, based on our uh, research result, not only uh, within our project to my project, but uh, among the three projects. I should I mean, like to mention that uh, the, the first team, uh, Professor Yang and Dr. Gerson, has done quite well on the climate change part, <clears throat> which is important uh, both uh, countries. Then the, the, the third team, uh, uh, Dr. Wen Chao and <clears throat> Professor Yu, uh, has done, I think, more on the, the human factor, yes, more on the hydrogenic, uh, uh, what the kind of the quality uh, uh, impact and so on. So our, our uh, uh, team two, uh, project two, uh, working maybe in between the both uh, natural uh, climate change and also the anthropogenic factor. So these are something that may be quite common if we want to organize maybe the whole team like Joyce webinar, including a stakeholder from Thailand and China, because we, we could not <laughs> do in, in the last two years uh, in, in person. Uh, I don't know if we can do in person this time or a bit hybrid. Anyway, I think that would be a good chance. 
then uh, within the project again, uh, we have a number of good cases, uh, good research result. Uh, like Professor Yang mentioned, uh, we should be able to turn uh, this result into more on the application and uh, some kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, practical and policy types of the uh, implication, which uh, we still continue. I believe every team uh, doing more publication, uh, not only academic side, uh, to involve the stakeholders <clears throat> from uh, different uh, sectors, in fact. So this is the first part. The second part, uh, let me end with a good uh, ch a chance to continue from Professor Yang mentioned. We are moving to the SDG. And we know that in China, the Bill and Road and any other activity also moving in similar direction. Uh, Thailand, not only the country, I think that uh, this group and uh, Thailand might represent more on the Southeast Asia. I mean, uh, this uh, regional ties of the collaboration. So we perhaps uh, can discuss more on how to collaborate, uh, to uh, promote, to contribute to the SDG. And obviously a lot of things that uh, can be done. Uh, I think I don't need to go detail, but we talk about the urban, we talk about any other specific types of the of the of the SEG, uh, including the water, which we could continue from, from this project. Yeah, thank you. That's all from me at the moment. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Yang and Professor Vilas, to share your uh, opinions and uh, support, uh, I mean, suggest some future directions which can we can continue working together and to support the SDG in our watersheds. Uh, so I think all of our suggestions, uh, opinions from the scientists and experts uh, cannot go without the support of policy. So my last question goes to uh, Dr. Montip. So could you please uh, provide us some um, uh, policy impl uh, implication or strategies uh, in how to enhance the research innovation and practice for a better watershed management especially through the uh, active uh, regional and the international collaboration. Yes, Dr. Monty, please. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wen Chao. Uh, I think I will touch on the SDG 6, which uh, Professor Yang has uh, already mentioned. SDG 6 is one of the 17 SDGs established by United Nations General Assembly by 2015. It called for the clean water and sanitation. And the official wording of SDG 6 is ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. So this SDG 6 cut across the wide range of interconnected social economic and environmental challenges and the law and expertise of the regional cooperation are critical to overcome all of this. So in this regard, I would like to emphasize that the regional cooperation are also very important. The first one, I think providing the knowledge and solution to support implementation of SDG, especially SDG 6. So new knowledge, innovation, and perform transformation are uh, often required to facilitate decision making to achieve challenge SDG target. I think this is uh, what we have discussed. Second one is creating, implementing, or uh, implementation of SDGs. For the regional cooperation through the education of alliance, uh, developing regional program on capacity building activities, achieving SDG 6, I think requires public participation and regional cooperation can help to achieve these goals by building current and future leaders. This is important, leaders, decision makers, inventors, entrepreneurs, and citizens. The other one is embodying the principle of SDGs through organizational governance, operations, and culture. Uh, and the regional and national cooperation can help to achieve SDGs in a community by implementing principle of SDG 6 in their governance, structure, operations, and culture again. Provide cross sectoral leadership in implementations, I think today we have discussed a lot on our scientific finding, but how to make uh, all the leaders fully aware of the cross sectoral role. So the regional cooperation 
uh, can provide capacity building and responsibility to guide national and international communities towards partnerships for the implementations. So our partnership shows a kind of good practice. Access of funding, I think, uh, well, uh, we cannot do uh, much without the access to funding. So the various donors, including government agencies, international banks increasing uh, investment in this kind of uh, uh, sustainable development goal six and research. I think we, we do recognize that research capacity can help governments, decision makers and administrators solve problem to meet our goal. So overall research can be categorized into problem definition, procedure, investigation, analysis, synthesis, conclusions, products, and byproducts. I think uh, these are the factors and definition of tangible indicators, identifying existing technical and uh, social gaps that we have to still need to be looked at, identify barriers to uh, reaching our targets. And we should not only require high research, but basic research uh, need to be looked at, such as facilities like professional equipped lab, uh, libraries, computer facilities, internet access, access to database, and financial assistance. These are also still very important. And I think uh, uh, NSFC play a very important role to promote uh, this kind of uh, uh, promoting research uh, basic uh, facilities. Other one is promotion. I think we cannot just do research without the promotion activities. Regional cooperation are vital of promoting importance and challenges of the implementation of the public role in decision making as regards to our SDG 6. So this activity, we should consider active participation in the public media political analysis of public decisions, uh, promoter training, promoting the art of conveying success to public and government uh, authorities. I think we still have to do a lot on how to make our decision maker fully aware of our result. And technology, I think technology, we should look at the patent protection, uh, idea ownership, intellectual property, promoting startup and innovations. I think we have done a lot on uh, different kinds of innovations, commercialization of our research products, technology development and upscaling, blending support, technology management networks. These are very good network that we are now starting. Local and traditional technology also need to be looked at. We should recognize uh, the traditional technology promotion and protection. And other important one is non-academic education and training. I think we should look at the e-learning, how we can continue our program to move forward to e-learning, adult education, education for also group like women, interaction between public and uh, government, education, public authorities, and uh, last one is uh, monitoring. I think we have uh, started a very good uh, research and the outcome. So for the next step, I think we should continue follow up by conducting monitoring, identifying uh, national, like our SDG 6 uh, related program in the government and non-government, whether uh, what, what, are, what are the program existing one and how we can embed our plan into that program survey of accordance to prevent uh, to prevent national program SDG uh, six that we should present how we could work uh, together developing monitoring structures of programs and indicators and also lastly monitoring SDG six indicator that uh, at uh, specify intervals means after we conduct our research, maybe after two years, we can come back again and see whether what 
uh, we have found in this time uh, can do uh, uh, some improvement or anything that we should do more. So these are policy implement uh, implications and strategies in research innovation that I would like to uh, propose. And I fully uh, agree that our research study on the comparison of our Javia and Jurong watershed uh, will be a very important step to uh, move our population in the very near future again. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Montip. So uh, due to the time limitation, I will close the, our discussion, but I would like to thank all the panelists uh, uh, for uh, sharing your opinion. Thank you very much. So um, before we close, uh, may I invite uh, uh, Dr. Montip to provide a brief uh, wrap up of to, uh, today's webinar and also provide us the closing remarks. Dr. Montip, please. Well, I think I... I will be very short. I think on behalf of the National Research Council of Thailand, I would like to express our uh, sincere appreciation to all organizations that provide joint integrated uh, study, namely Asian Institute of Technology, Lam Kham Heng University, as well as the Chinese Research Institute like Tsinghua University, Shepman University, Institute of Urban Environment, Chinese Academy of Science on the Thailand-China collaboration on sustainable watershed development in the context of future program. Our sincere gratitude to the Bureau of International Cooperation, National Natural Science Foundation of China or NSFC and the National Research Council of Thailand to make the project possible and a success one. Uh, also, I would like to thank to all speakers, uh, Professor Chubaka Dakal, Vice President AIT, Dr. Viparat Diong, our Executive Director of NRCT, uh, Professor Yong Tao Chang, Deputy Director General NSFC, Professor Darwin Yang, Xinhua uh, University, Dr. Jila Son, Santi Sri Som Bat. Professor Jin Liang Huang, uh, Professor Villa Niti Watananun, uh, Associate Professor Wen Chao Shu, uh, Dr. Tada Sukha Panhanan Banapan. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank AIT Solutions Center uh, to help assist in making our webinar performance a success one. Thank you to all the speakers and also to all participants and stay safe. Thank you so much. Sorry, Kat.